All right, hello everyone. It's uh, Christoph. I'm here at the uh, VOGA World Congress in Barcelona 2023. And look at all the noise around us. It's really busy here. And I'm so happy. I'm here with uh, Martin Lerner from Ericsson. Martin is responsible for uh, the cloud business, the already cloud business at Ericsson. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. No, I really appreciate you taking the time. So Martin, maybe introduce your team a little bit. What are you doing at Ericsson? What does it mean to manage the ORAN business at Ericsson? Absolutely. So my name is Mortlana. I am head of Veronica Line Cloud Realm. Okay. And that's where we do the virtualized version of our radio portfolio. Okay. So I run the management, product management part of this to so design the products, collaborate with partners such as yourself to realize the cloud portfolio for our customers. Okay. And so you just said it, the virtualization. So your business has gone from what used to be very much a hardware business to now a system. It's hardware, but a lot of software. Correct. Can you describe that a little bit? Yes, it's been a very interesting journey, actually. We are, of course, as part of our, our portfolio, we always had an important software component. But we have realized that on our own proprietary hardware. We have always had a tight connection between the hardware and the software. As we're now embarking on virtualization, we're really disaggregate in the software and the hardware. So the software becomes a very important piece from our point of view. And then we're working with hardware vendors and like CPU and accelerators such as yourself to realize the solution. So that means that we are separating our development in terms of cloud run to software business owner. And then we work with portable for the hardware piece. And it probably means that the innovation cycle is, in, is accelerating a lot. Yeah, that's moved to software. Yes. So telecom industry is always a very interesting to work in. I, I sometimes refer to it as white water rafting. You just have <laughs> to go. And I feel that the water is going faster and faster for every year we're here. Yeah, I feel the same way. So maybe you know, for if you come to uh, the Mobile World Congress right now and you would listen in to conversations, you would hear people talk about 5G, 6G, VRAN, ORAN. Can you put that into perspective? What does that mean and what is, where is Ericsson going? Absolutely. So I think uh, 5G and all of the stuff you're saying, 5G, 6G, open on the year on is really the center of the show this year. And a lot of the discussions we are having with partners and customers are really centric around this topic. And many of our customers have spent uh, quite a lot of effort of building out their 5G network, yeah. they have Cloudify, their core network. And everyone is now looking at what's the next architecture that we're going to build for the future. Yes. And this is where cloud run and open runs really come into play. Uh, we had spent quite some time now in the industry to try to define what this will be. And I think now is where we're starting to see that this is actually realizing and where we can actually start to see that customers are picking up the pace and actually look at, okay, so what does the solutions mean for me? What does it mean for my ability to build a 5G network? But also, what does this mean for I, my evolution of the network as I go forward into 60? Yeah. And that's why the, 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 the collaboration between our portfolio that we have already out in the market, what we call then the purpose based portfolio and the cloud run portfolio, is to seamlessly interwork. So we can easily introduce this into the 5G network that is there today. Yes. And that is where this whole thing is coming together for the future network in that ass. But we what is so interesting, I spend in my life a bit of time on digital manufacturing and uh, you know, building private networks. And the dream was to have 5G, okay? Yeah. Now we have 5G and we see all of these use cases on the edge and all the AI that can be done on the edge actually become reality. And it's, it's super cool for you probably to see that as well happening. It is, it is. And it's a, a, a major focus on our customer base as well. We have been talking about this 5G use cases and the yeah. ability to monetize the investments that has been going out in a network. And I think that being lifted what we're now doing with moving out, compute out closer to that, create creates a foundation to realize the potential that is in 5G. We, we have to say that we haven't fully done that as an industry yet. And I think that's what we're going to do now next. Yeah. Is to once the platform is built, let's leverage that for innovation and I continue on building on that platform. And their AI comes as a very important piece, both when it comes to our own portfolio, but also into the enterprise space where you can actually then realize some the AI components out of this solution. Yeah. So, Arthur, you work with your team very closely with Intel. How would you describe this? How is this going? Where can we do better? It's uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone at Intel for this collaboration. I think this kind of very good collaboration. We're working closely together. So it's been really a way for us to realize this architecture. We couldn't have done it without you. 
Uh, then I have to say that this is also a competitive market. Yes. Uh, so we see a lot of different players out there today. So competition is going to be fierce. And together we're going to have to make sure that we continue this collaboration. We can't be complacent just because we have a solution now. We have a very good start before us. But the evolution of this is going to be the thing that is going to determine if we succeed or if we fail. And I think the new processor that you're releasing in Barcelona, the fourth generation side processor, could only with a VRON boost. It's a fantastic platform. Now we can show that they can actually realize a ROM workflow that is complicated. But we need to look at the evolution as well. Yeah. So I really encourage all the innovation in Intel to continue to innovate, continue to be able to compete against the competition that is going to come into this space and making sure that the multi-generation approach that we have in the collaboration can realize not only the current solution, but also the future solution to say competitive. Mm -hmm. So that's my number one was. My number two was is that we look maybe beyond the power performance aspect of this, because a lot of this will also come into play of how do we together realize AI solutions and how do we work in the sustainability angle and all of this different dimension that is important for our customers in their selection of architecture. And that's where we need to collaborate together. We need to leverage the Eric's on Intel Tech Hub that we have established for innovations like this and make sure that we get tangible deliverables out of it. Yes, but I think tangible and also making sure that we bring real value to our customers yes. and that we bring value that we can then continue to build on and make these relationships very, very sticky. Yes, I fully agree. I think we have a... We have a good starting point. We have seen our CEOs being on stage to talk about how we're now going to stand this for industry scale and make sure that this become a solution. But we also have to build on next generations. As we scale and as we get this customer discussions going, it's not the end of it. It's the start. That's the start. I agree with you. Martin, thanks so much. I really appreciate you joining me. And I hope to all of you that you learned something listening uh, to our customer, Martin from Ericsson. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank Thanks you. for coming. It was great. Thank you.